Hello and welcome. For those of you who are new, you are watching Quantum ASMR. And for those of you who aren't new, welcome back. Welcome back. So, today we are going to be continuing in our book. We are going to be, I believe, finishing a chapter, finishing the chapter on genes and the mechanics of DNA. I know I've whispered most of these, actually all of these videos so far, so I thought I would throw in a twist and do soft-spoken this time. So I hope you enjoy it and just sit back, relax. Again, this is a straight through video, no edits unless my camera dies and or my dog starts barking, so we'll see. He's sitting like I look a good little boy right now, but we'll see. So, all right, so we left off at DNA stuffed viruses. So let's start. It's not just your cells that are faced with the task of compressing DNA into tight spaces. Every living organism packs its DNA and none leave it alone as a free, random walk chain. This even extends to the not-quite-living world. Viruses, little capsules of genetic material that infect living cells, hijacking their replication machinery, contain the densest known packaging of DNA. Not all viruses contain double-stranded DNA. Some contain single DNA strand, and some contain single or double-stranded RNA. Those that do have a double-stranded DNA, DNA genome, which include the viruses that cause herpes and smallpox. Mm. Must, uh, must stuff this rigid molecule into a protein, protein shell just tens of nanometers in diameter, Again, smaller than the coon length of the DNA double helix. Double-stranded RNA is even stiffer than double-stranded DNA. For both DNA and RNA, a single strand is much more flexible. In a double-stranded DNA virus, the bent, squished polymer pushes on the virus's shell, or caps it, trying to stretch out. And I just realized that I'm on mono instead of stereo, so we're going to read it normally. <laughs> when the capsid is opened, for example, when the virus infects a cell, this internal pressure helps propel the DNA into its cellular target. How can we measure the pressure of the compressed DNA? Imagine opening a closed capsid. The DNA rushes out. Now, imagine squeezing the capsid from all sides, applying pressure and then opening the capsid. If the external pressure is less than the internal pressure, DNA will still come out. If the external pressure is greater, the DNA will re remain inside. By varying the external pressure and monitoring whether or not DNA is released, one can determine the pressure inside the virus. That's so easy to imagine, but actually doing it requires coming up with some clever experimental tricks, one of which was implemented about 15 years ago by William Gelbart and colleagues at the University of California in Los Angeles. Capsid opening is naturally triggered when a virus encounters particular proteins on the surface of its target cell. Adding these proteins artificially to a beaker full of viral capsids provides opening on demand. The viral particles are dispersed in a watery solution. Adding large molecules to the solution provides an osmotic pressure, a bit like bombarding the virus with all the molecules floating around it. That acts like our phys physical, that acts like our hypothetical squeezing of the capsids. By varying osmotic pressure and using protein-triggered capsid opening, Scientists discovered internal pressures in viruses that were tens of atmospheres in magnitude. For comparison, 
the air pressure in a car tire is about two atmospheres. To get more into to get a more intuitive sense of the mechanical feats performed by these viruses, biophysicist Rob Phillips suggests envisioning 500 yards of Golden Gate Bridge suspension cable crammed into the pack into the back of a FedEx delivery truck. These huge internal pressures are valuable for the virus, helping it launch its DNA into a targeted cell where it will be replicated initiating the generation of new viruses. That's kind of scary, actually. We can't understand DNA without understanding its physical properties. Shape, structure, and mechanics are inextricably tied to biological function. This statement isn't true for just DNA, but for all of nature's biomolecules, a recurring theme throughout biophysics. In the next chapter, we return to the question of how a surprisingly small number of genes can guide the process, processes that make you by exploring how genes can be switched on and off by external controls or by other genes, creating a meshwork of interactions that is again inseparable. <laughs> Tachi. Tachi, love. I'm almost done, baby. By external controls or by other genes, creating a, mesh a meshwork of interactions that is, again, inseparable, inseparable from the tangible, physical activities of life's molecules. You know, I kind of felt like I sounded like a, um, like one of those people who, like, read off stuff for, like, commercials or for, like, those people that you hear on, uh, when they put you on hold in, like, the doctor's office or, like, a pharmacy. <laughs> so, that was really short. I didn't realize that that's all I had left. I could have totally just read the rest of it uh, in the last video. But the next video is going to be on the choreography of genes. We are now on chapter four. Choreography of genes... Let's see, we've got gene regulation, lots of gene regulation, portable genetic control, genetic memories, clocks and circuits, genes in the attic, and that'll be it. So, yeah, I can't believe that's all I have for you today. I don't want to read too far in. Sorry, this was really short. I feel like I should expand it longer, but also I've been really, really like looking at ideas for my scare series coming up. Uh, there's a couple things, there's a couple options that I have with that in ways that I want to go about that. Um, I never did the uh, video that I wanted to do last year and I have all the props and costuming for that so I really want to make that like the big focus this time but there's a couple other really cool ideas that I have as well that I want to carry through on but we'll see we'll see how far I get um, I know I've been kind of on a little YouTube hiatus this past almost two weeks. I've been, when I talked about my career and its direction as far as going into like acting or something like that, I was serious about that. So I did inquire to a couple different talent agencies and I have sent in applications for other auditions. I'm using this one app. I don't know how it'll go. We'll see. So keep your fingers crossed for me. Most of this, I haven't been just like sitting in my, sitting on my hands these past couple weeks. I've been doing a lot of like taping for that stuff. So that's where all that has been. And yeah. I just, I don't know, guys. I, 
I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not like sad or depressed or anything like that right now. It's just more of like, <sighs> I need my creative spark back for here. So if any of you have suggestions on what kind of videos that you want to see in the next few weeks or so, he barked. That's why there's going to be a cut. But if, if any of you have any suggestions, <laughs> if any of you have any suggestions for me on videos in the next couple weeks, um, as long as I have the necessary tools and stuff, I would really, really, really love your suggestions. I know I ask for suggestions all the time, and I just like forget, so leave them in the comments below. I would really love that, so I could, you know, cater to what you want to see. I know a lot of you are here for the science content, so I really want to continue with that. I haven't been doing that for the last couple weeks, and that's just due to not having enough time to prep for them because, you know, with science, it's like I, I have my degree, but I can't just like pull it out of my ass, you know, so it takes, it takes prep work, so any suggestions though, scientific or general, I would love from you, and this video is very short, and sorry about that, but we're gonna close the video, and I really appreciate all of your guys' support, it really means a lot to me that you continue to watch my videos, and that's all I have, so I hope that you have a good night. A good night or a good morning a good morning or a good day. Day, 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 day whatever time of day you're watching this I hope you are doing very well and I'll see you all in my next video so bye guys <laughs>